Well, uh, this afternoon, welcome to uh, Musician Moment, I guess we'll call it, with the Tulsa Symphony. And I'm Ken Busby, uh, your cultural czar, also a member of the uh, board of directors of the Tulsa Symphony. And we're here today with a brilliant violinist, Hannah Murray. Hello, Hannah. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. How's, uh, how's life in L.A.? You know, the traffic is amazing right now. <laughs> I know that it's on the road. I bet. So. so are you getting out some just to go, like, uh, drive to have this freedom of movement? <laughs> <laughs> I keep in my quarantine car. Okay, good, um, good. <laughs> I've been exploring the neighborhoods. Um, I take my dog. I live very close to the Griffith Observatory. Okay. So I take my dog through the streets that are usually full of cars parked that are trying to go to the observatory. Um, so once once in a while we get out and kind of explore the beautiful historic neighborhoods around here. That's so. nice. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's certainly an unusual time for all of us right now as we're trying to mm -hmm. na navigate our way through it. It's like, yes. wow, wow. So listen, remind me uh, and, and, our, and our viewers and listeners, uh, mm -hmm. how long have you been with the Tulsa Symphony? Oof, that's a great question. Um, I started subbing with the orchestra actually, I think around 2014. Okay, okay. Um, I just couldn't remember. As associate principal, second in I think 2016. Okay, okay. So a, a solid four years with us. Yeah. And and, and, yeah. and a little more because you were subbing. That's great. That's mm -hmm. great. So uh, what made you want to get involved with the Tulsa Symphony? Obviously, LA is uh, very different from Tulsa. Yeah. <laughs> but I used to live in Tulsa. Right. Um, and I loved that city. I loved living there. Just. It's so beautiful. It's so underrated um, in the grand scheme of this country. Mm -hmm. um, what if I just my place there? Um, my colleagues were really um, familial, and it was just a really nice rapport. Everybody nice. felt like they were on an even. Um, I, I don't want to say playing field, but I felt like you could approach or talk to any member of the orchestra which is really nice and not necessarily the dynamic in a lot of other ensembles. So. I, I've heard that. So that, that makes me good. Uh, glad to hear it. That it's, it's still <laughs> true and you're finding that. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, did, have you always played the violin? I have. I've been playing since I was four or five. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have a desire to, to play another instrument? Or was that just what called to you? <laughs> yes. Fun fact. Uh, uh -huh. My mother forced me to play uh, <laughs> piano. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think and most I was, mothers do. It's okay. Yes. And I didn't practice on purpose, so she would really get the point that I didn't want to do it. <laughs> um, and then I really, really so used to play the oboe. Okay, okay, nice. So, and obviously, obviously, you found your home in the violin. I did. Yeah, yes. that's where you're. That's where you're happiest. I think so. I mean, yeah. I think we get some really nice melodies and some good music, so it's kind of fun. Have, have you ever thought about if you weren't, so obviously since you played since you were four or five, um, if you weren't playing the violin today, what you would be doing? Whew, that's tough. Uh, I think, well, after I finished my dissertation, I wrote my dissertation about yoga and violin play, and it involved nice. a lot of research in the medical field and mm -hmm. in the medical journals of life, and I got really fascinated with anatomy mm -hmm. um, and the, how the body works and I and I think that if I wasn't a violinist I would probably be doing something in that realm maybe like a chiropractor or a physical therapist or something like how that. How interesting how interesting have you done anything uh with with goat yoga and violin no, playing? Not yet. <laughs> not yet okay that's a that's a, a new horizon potential out there okay I, I love the idea of goat yoga I just think it's funny I just think it's yeah. funny uh but listen you also work on a on a um uh, I don't know what you exactly call it, but music and health project, health and wellness. Yeah. So I, um, I co-host and co-run a musician's health and wellness platform called Course Sonor, mm -hmm. uh, which is a historical term, um, and it means sound body or resonating body. Okay. Um, so it's all about bringing the research that's kind of hard for performers to get to, um, to a place where it's easily accessible and applicable for our lives. So nice. we run a monthly podcast where we interview, um, I want to call them the musician healers of the world, people who are working in this industry already, 
um, people who just have a vested interest in movement and exercise and building healthy communities in their sure. orchestra. Sure. Um, we also have a lot of curated content from people who uh, help musicians and research what, what we deal with and help us with our issues. So. Oh, what, what, a cool, what a cool project. Thank I, you. I bet you're helping a lot of people, too. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> crossing fingers, crossing fingers. Yeah. Um, so I, obviously, really busy taking care of well, playing music and and your puppy dog and and all of that. Do you have any downtime? And if so, what what do you like to do when you're not performing and not you know teaching and podcasting and so forth? That's tough. Um, I I'm a busybody by nature, so I like to fill all the corners of my life. Um, so, but I do read a lot. I, I read a lot of fiction um i'm reading actually right now a historical fiction about a stradivarius violin Ooh. um called antonietta which okay. is it's been very fun i bet um and i do a lot so i do a lot of reading i do a lot of yoga uh that's kind of it well that's that's enough you've got you've got, <laughs> you've got a full life i wasn't i wasn't questioning that i wasn't questioning that um well listen i know i know that you're going to um play for us today and give us a little musical uh, tidbit to uh, to uh, intrigue us and remind us of, uh, of, of of your musical instruments. So why don't you tell, tell us a little bit about what, what we're going to hear? Um, so I'm going to play Danny Boy. It's, nice. I, I love Danny Boy. It really pulls at my own heartstrings, but I always dedicate it to my grandfather who uh, passed away a couple of years ago. Hmm. Uh, but when I play this, it it just feels so special for myself and the audience that I think it's, it's one of those pieces that people should just hear and sink into more often. I think that's nice. I love it that it's, uh, you know, in honor of your, in memory of your grandfather, but it's also, it's a perfect time. It's spring and for all the challenges that we're all facing right now, it sort of speaks to a little bit of hope and a little bit exactly. of, of, of the, we'll, we'll, the, we're going to get through this and we'll get, we'll get to it. So, well, Hannah, it has been great visiting with you today. Um, thanks so much for your time and, and sharing it with us and, and our friends of the, and audience of the Tulsa Symphony. Um, My pleasure. Uh, so uh, I look forward to chatting again, but right now let me just invite the audience to, to join me and uh, in listening to you perform Danny Boy. So let's all listen together, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>